And we are back, folks, with another edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study with that man they call DG, rocking the block M and doing so this week because this is the game, the week where it all, it all is on the line. Is Ryan Day, is he really fit to coach the Ohio State Buckeyes when you were handed the keys to a kingdom? And all you got to do, all you got to do is just uh, don't mess it up. Just don't mess it up. Man, if they get beat a third year in a row, he didn't just mess it up. He effed it up. So we'll see if it worked out. If it works out that way, DG, I know you don't like hey, you know, it. You know a movie I watched earlier this week? <laughs> I watched Bring It On. It's so funny. Such a good movie. I watched it on a plane. And uh, Big Red said, I, it was an idiot-proof routine. And you completely messed it up. <laughs> I don't know. Ryan Day might have dropped that spirit stick at your camp. I don't yeah. know. He may have. It was already set up for success. It had been so successful up to this point. All right, so we're going to jump right in. We are spending as much time this week on the film because... Because nothing matters. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we're just doing this just because we do it every week. We, I really should be not even talking to you right now. It doesn't <laughs> matter. What happened last week doesn't matter. What happened the week before, before, what J.J. has done all season, what anybody on the team has done all season, it doesn't matter, except for Kenneth Grant. That matters. He is a monster. But what everything I- else doesn't matter. Not even Samaj Morgan? Man, stop saying Samaj's name, man. Just let him – we tried to let him live in obscurity, but he's too talented. And now, just stop it. But he has been outstanding. But not, none of it matters. Even what Samaj has done doesn't matter. This is totally different. This has nothing to do with any of that. And um, we shouldn't be breaking it down. But we got to do it because we love you, the people. And Sam has a little soliloquy that he likes to go through that uh, is going to help you understand what we're doing here. That's right. See, we're back even when we feel like we should be focused on the next game because we do this. Strictly for your entertainment, your education, your edification. Why? Why then do we uh, use this footage? Because we love you, right? We go own this footage. This is here. We're all about E E E, right? Education, edification, entertainment, and also E L E. Everybody knows that means everybody loving everybody, right? So we love you. We know you love us, and so we got to make sure we do it for you. Well, folks, you can help fund the film study, though. You see that PayPal link right there in the description? Click that, and you can help fund the film study because DG, it, it gets more expensive to be DG. <laughs> like, I mean, my man was talking about his cocoa butter treatment. I was like, man, that's why you, you always so glistening like that? Like, damn, DG, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got I to gotta have light flashing on me to be glistening. DG don't I even got need light, light, too. <laughs> DG don't even need the light. So, folks. <laughs> Right there in the descriptions and certainly in the comment section. Click those links. You can help fund the film. Say, oh, by the way, let me also note. You know, if anybody want to pay me for when I broke my foot, I didn't get paid for that. So <laughs> <laughs> when I broke my foot in this game, I didn't get paid. All that, I'm saying. So y'all can go ahead and guard Devin J on all the – you say what you say? I said that's for real, though. Like, you should uh, – players should be getting, like, you know. I mean, what's up? Yeah. I bled like, and dang near almost died, you know. That's legit. But I want to tell you about one more deal that's going on right now over on 24-7 Sports. You see me wearing it right now. They have a Black Friday sale. That is the best deal of the year every single year, right? 75% off an annual subscription. So all of the Intel, all of the Insight, all of the VIP content, VIP message boards, not just for the Michigan site, but for all the sites on the network, including Ohio State, if you want to see how they're really getting down behind the scenes. <laughs> that 24-7 Sports annual subscription, the Black Friday sale is live right now. I'll put that in the comment section as well. You get 75% off. It is amazing bang for your buck. And you you full-time subscribers, you full-paying subscribers, they didn't forget about you. If you were on a promo, you can activate your Paramount Plus subscription. You have not you know, it activated your Paramount Plus perk, do so now. If you haven't been able to do that, make sure you just message me. It is a great perk. Uh, a lot of great shows. Mayor of Kingstown, uh, Special Ops Lioness, Zoe Saldana, some great shows. Uh, 1923 on Paramount Plus, great, great, great uh, perk 
if you are a full paying 24 7 sports subscriber over on the michiganinsider.com do not miss out because it will not last that long i'll put the link in the description as well with that dg let's get into this game man maryland the terrapins they played a couple teams tough they played ohio state tough for instance uh and wound up squandering that that opportunity they got blown off, got their doors blown off by Penn State, but you mm-hmm. knew they had this one circle because this is Josh Gaddis getting a chance to play against his old team. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I don't know why this game, because even before, I don't know why it's so important. Maryland always plays Michigan tough. And I guess, you know, having Gaddis there this year obviously helps out just because he knows the Michigan program and, and what have you. But even last year when Gaddis wasn't there, they played Michigan tough. So I just think that this is a reoccurring thing. Like, I remember when we played, for some reason, Northwestern wasn't very good, but they always played us tough. And we would always win, but it would just always be like a clawing, scratching dog fight. And I think it's kind of because of the leadership at, at Maryland. Uh, I think Coach Locksley's doing a really good job. I had him earlier this year. And they got real nice talent, right? And obviously, next year, they're going to have to replace their quarterback and those wide receivers that are talented are going to go. But He's doing a great job in the DMV, making sure he gets a lot of the, the best players around because uh, Virginia can't do anything. They're inept, so they're going to make sure they get all those players out of DMV, uh, and they're going to continue to be good. And they might continue to give Michigan troubles, but the most important thing is winning, and obviously you never apologize for winning. You never apologize for being 11-0. and 0. Um, And like I said before this even started, when we first got started today, it doesn't matter. I don't care what the score was. I don't care how they played. I don't care about any of that. When you got what we have on the horizon, that that other stuff is just water under the bridge. And like I said, we're going to go through it. But like I said, water under the bridge. It's a great message. And, and keep that in mind as we break down this film, because it was an interesting game from the standpoint of play calling and J.J.'s play and how those two things went together and I, I couldn't help but think about you and talking about games where you weren't really off where you weren't really on like we know we know the dg who threw for a thousand yards versus indiana yeah. we know the dg that had half a epic, thousand against against ohio state <laughs> yeah half a thousand against ohio state had the epic game against like dg has some of the most iconic quarterback performances that we've seen in the michigan uniform you can take yeah. a bow i know you want to <laughs> I mean. Right. You know it's crazy. You know it's crazy, and this was my goal when I got in the media. Kids don't even know I play football; they just think I'm a TV guy. That's that's why I want to be so good in the media. It's like we don't even know you play football. That's exactly right. Right. So so, and, and I like also, to always say I did what I did. So but you also know. talked about you tell us people who watch us. You you tell us about the UConn game too. Yeah. How you were playing in that game? The same guy that lit Notre Dame up, lit Ohio State up. Mm-hmm. For a thousand yards versus versus Indiana, just couldn't find that rhythm. Yeah, against against uh, against UConn, and so how does that affect things? And that's kind of the backdrop of this game because JJ has some he has some throws where it's like, oh, look at that throw. And so let me it. let me tell you some let me tell you a story off of the UConn game that is I think is a little similar to what we're doing right now, and this is why I think JJ would be perfectly fine. So I'm 13 uh, in the Notre Dame game. All right, you remember I lit Notre Dame up, but in that game, if you watch, I got hit from the very first throw. I'm talking about they were killing me. And I'm just like, this is not what I signed up for, but I did sign up for it, right? And so after that game, everybody goes out. They have a good time, and I'm in the bed. I never saw the aftermath. I mean, it, they said it was crazy burning. I was just all kind of crazy stuff. I didn't see any, any of it because I was in the bed because I couldn't walk, right? And so I had like a some kind of pinch nerve deal going on with my hip. And so similar to like my elbow as a senior, some games I will feel good and other games it's just like my body isn't working the way I want it to. You know what I mean? And so getting into the UConn game, it was kind of like, you know, I feel all right, but I'm not feeling as good. And now you're thinking about it, right? Cause I can go right? I can run, I can do all these things, but every once in a while, it just doesn't feel as good as you want it to. Right. And so, I'm going through the game and I'm just not playing well. Yeah, I even I ran a touchdown. It was a nice touchdown, right? I ran a guy over at the goal line and whatever. So I'm healthy enough to play, but it's still kind of in the back of my mind when I strike the ground to throw all those different things. My hip is like, it's killing me, right? 
And so I can't make throws. I'm just not making throws. I'm missing throws left and right, uh, throws that I'm 100% can make, right? And so for every quarterback, or at least every quarterback should have a relationship with their coordinator where you know exactly what call to call when your quarterback is struggling, right? What throw do you know he's going to make to make sure he sees the completion and then get him on the right track, right? And so mine was always H2 slow X glance, right? H2 slow X glance. You go play action inside zone to the right, come out of it without even taking a hitch, stick that right foot in the ground, drive the ball down the field on a skinny post to Gallon, right? Everybody saw the success we had. I There are videos, and I don't know if I, I want to find it one day, but videos of me in the indoor with Jeremy Gallon, eyes closed, doing the exact play action, foot in the ground, throw the ball, throwing it to him perfectly with my eyes closed, right, without looking at him, right? So I know I can make this throw. He calls it. Gallon's open. It might be a touchdown, might not. Gallon got caught sometimes. But I skip it off the ground, right? That's the end, right? <laughs> hey, hey, boy, just uh, quarterback draw, running back draw, outside zone, inside zone. And let's play some defense, right? Because for, for whatever reason, I'm not I, – I can't. I, I, I Mentally, I don't know what's going on, whatever, right? And so you move forward. I, it never. I really never got healthy in that right, right? But when I got to the Ohio State game, I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel anything, right? And I'm able to run and whatever. And then well, everybody knows in that game, first play of the second half, break my foot, right? And so somehow you find something else within you because as much as you want other games to matter the same, it doesn't matter as much as this game right here. And the, and the good thing for Michigan, they're 11-0, and 0, right? So whether those games matter as much, which they don't, whether they did or not, they won them all. So it doesn't matter, right? You you know, you can't chastise them for saying this game matters more because they made sure they handle business in the first 11. And when you get in this game, it won't you won't feel it. So the thing is for J.J., he's not 100% healthy. How injured? He's not too injured to play, right? And so you're getting to a game and, and you're trying to get into a rhythm and you got a little in the back of your mind of, man, I feel, you know, I just don't feel right, you know, and – the snowball starts to roll. You throw an interception where you don't see the guy, right? He pops up out of nowhere, and then it's like, oh, here we go again, you know? But next week, that won't matter. That's it, period. It won't matter, right? He'll be fast. He'll be strong. He'll be able to make plays, and I I'm excited to watch it because it's just going to show, show how, how much dog he has in him, right? Because it, a guy that's not healthy and, and is, is struggling to perform in, in one game and the next game is a different guy. It's because this game matters more than anything in the world, in my opinion, when you're a Michigan football player. Man, that was some brilliant analysis. Like, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm not even setting you up for a joke. <laughs> like, that was. I can't trust you. So, you know me. You see me. You see me. I'm like, here he goes. Where are you going? I know. No, I'm not. That's not even a setup. That is outstanding analysis because I think it colors appropriately. What's going on? Like, you know, he he missed throws in this game that J.J. McCarthy makes or reads, not just throws, reads that he makes that he's been making all season. Mm -hmm. And it strikes me as what uh, like what you were talking about, you know, a guy who got a little banged around in that Penn State game. Maybe he was in the training room a little more last week as opposed to, like you said, you were in the bed. Like he didn't even show up for a meeting. Man. You know, that's akin to being in the training room, right? Yeah. It was probably some things like that getting ready for, for Maryland. So it wasn't quite as sharp as you know him to be. Different circumstance last year, DG, we got to get to the film. But I remember us having a conversation about the Illinois game, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it, I think that had more to do with who Illinois was. They were just like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they were just like that. I mean, they got a bunch of pros that are, are fighting for rookie of the year right now. Yeah, man, yeah. So I remember there was like a play. It was a pass, like a seven-yard pass where he just skipped it. And you said, and you made the, the comment of, Layup, Sam. I said, well, don't doesn't the coach need to get him in real? He said, no, nah, Sam, lay up, Sam. Just stop stop making excuses for him, Sam. I wasn't making excuses. I was on your head. I was on your head about that. <laughs> you were, we not making excuses. You skipped that ball off the ground, right? You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah and but I, I got the point that this was just him not just being all the way on in this game. And that's gonna happen for different mm -hmm. reasons. It's a 12 game season, but you haven't been there giving us some awesome perspective. Throw all that out the window. Or if you want to take it, if you want to take it into account, take it into account against the other nine games that you saw, right? Mm -hmm. He only had what the bowling green game? Or look at last year's Illinois game and what he came back and did against Ohio State the next week. Mm -hmm. This dude, you know him. I know I just I just know him 
Devin. Like, this dude is going to ball out in this game. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. So, mm-hmm. you on the table, DG? I know you on the table. You know, I, for, hey, hello. First of all, you're late to the table. Let's I was cool. never late to the table. You late I was to the table. Never, I was you never late, late to the table. table. You're a K I mean, guy. If you, if, oh, hell. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just talking crazy. I'm just like, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. No, no, we never no. get to the field if I don't take that back. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> Let's go to the field. My goodness, I was joking. All right. All right. Oh, man. Okay. And, and, and also, we talked to him one morning quarter. We got to bring up that national guy and why he's basically hating on, on JJ. We got to tell why. I mean, it, it, I, I don't even remember his name, but I gave him the excuse of being national. Then we find out some extra information. Well, he's a guy that's tied to Jordan Palmer, who is tied to Kay McNamara. So this is why he's hating. And this is why you can't trust people. You just can't trust them. Because now his analysis, you, you can't have any credibility. Not only do we know you didn't watch a game all season, we know that. But also, you're just a- appeasing to some, you know, I'm not even, whatever. I don't even know. I don't even remember his name, honestly. Somebody and I'm disappointed daddy. in him. What's about Danny Cadell? All right. Danny let's, Cadell. Let's go this ahead. Guy. Let me pause it. And so we can get to the plays because, you know, there were some throws that were vintage, typical J.J. McCarthy throws. Mm-hmm. We got a, we got a, an array of them to kind of start out the film study here, DG. So There you go. I love what they did with the running backs and lining them outside and and bringing them in and showing great motion and all these different things. But this is this is what we're talking about, right? He's still there, right? He's still the same OG. You know what I mean? Drop back, ball on the outside, perfect throw on time. No time for anybody to get to him. Outstanding route by Colson Loveland, and, and I just love it. But the, because when I talked to Monday Morning quarterback, that's what I said. Is going to be the difference in this game because I think Ohio State is going to play him to a whole or kind of a hey, let's make him make plays and whatever. And he's going to come out and play on time in rhythm, and they're going to be a little flustered from it. They're going to try to make adjustments, and that's when he's really going to explode, I believe. So this is this is great, and that's a good job of Coach Loveland attacking the leverage of the defensive back, giving nothing that he's going out and sticking his foot in the ground, going out in, in a perfect outside throw. Yeah, man, and, and Colson is a problem. He's a problem for most teams mm-hmm. to deal with, man. Most all. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think know. there's a team that that has an answer for him. I think you're right. I think you're yeah, right. Yeah, he's good. And he the thing is, it's been it's been a few weeks since we've really flexed his muscles. You know what I mean? He's kind of been living in obscurity for a few weeks, and 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 it's time for him again to explode. Remember, he had a big day against Ohio State a year ago as well. Mm-hmm. He sure did. And uh and here we go. And by the way, that that's 16 to that's 16 to 3 drive, man. You know, they they score on that drive, they go up 23 to 3. It's feeling like a game, right? And so yeah. now we're getting into it. This is the, the two minute drill, uh, where they're where they're driving. And here we Again, go. you know, you got you got vertical routes on this side and whatever, and so the concept is to the field. Right, it's similar to stick, right? And so let me explain to you stick. Stick is you can see that option route right there by the number three receiver, and then the the or, or smash or stick, you got the inside guy going vertical, right? And then the outside guy going in a hitch, right? And so this doesn't like stick to normal people, but when you get slot fade, where does he end up? The same place you would end up if you're the outside guy running a more route, M-O-R, mandatory outside release, and then the hitch, where does he end up? Well, he end up where he ends up where the number two receiver would be on a normal stick, where he just races out to the flat, right? So this is once again elementary concepts with gradual level execution and just trying to changing it so it can be simple for the quarterback to read and for the defense it's a totally different look, right? But married to stick on the backside, you always got individual cuts, right? And so on this play, you got an individual cut one on one with with CJ, so you don't even have to go to the concept, right? Get outside. Allow him to win one on one. I think there are going to be a lot of opportunities like this against Ohio State yet again to play on time, drive the ball on on your individual cut receiver's face, and then move on. And that's what he does here. I love how offensive coordinators have adapted, right, and taking these concepts that are very simple and making them look different, having guys move and and from different spots. But essentially, they all end up at the same spot. 
and I'll, I'll explain it one more time. The number three receiver, that's the normal stick where you have an option to go in, go out, hook up, or whatever. But in the slot, the number two receiver, the number one receiver, they essentially flip responsibilities, right? So you go slot fade to, to take the place of the guy that will be on the outside running a go route, right? And then you use this hitch to control that flat player uh, as if he was the guy number two running a short, quick out, you know. So I think that's really cool what they're doing there. But if you got it on the right side, individual cut, you got to throw it. And the alley defender, the safety that's down, you got to beat him with the throw. And we saw him do it on this play, and then we're going to see him do it on a few other plays where if there's a guy that can take it away, but you have to beat him with the throw, and we know he's capable of doing it. Yes, he is. And so, like you said, it's, hey, it was there. You still saw some of the flashes. It just wasn't every single play. Yeah, like it wasn't as consistent as we'd seen. Absolutely. All right, let's jump right back to it. DG. Let's go ahead and get it. So this is another one of those examples of elementary concepts with gradual level execution and and find a way to get to it without looking like you're doing it right. And so the outside route that you see there, it's a bench. And, and, and in football rooms, we call it a circus, right? A circus route because it, you dive in, you go vertical, you come out. It looks like a C, right? So we call it circus. The inside, obviously, is just a, a flat route. What does that look like, Sam? It's smash, right? It's a Usually, it's a hitch on the outside, and the number two receiver will go on the corner, right? Well, just flip responsibilities, and now it looks different for the defense, a different presentation for the defense, but it's the same type of read for the quarterback so he can play on time. This is it's genius, and, and not only Michigan does this. A lot of teams do this. I see a lot of coaches, a lot of film all year, and when you simplify things like this, you allow your quarterback to play fast and, and play sometimes flawless, especially if they understand the basic concept, which is smash, and then you go to this, which is just a fancy smash. Let's call this fancy smash. <laughs> right, so it's high-low, right? You want to control these higher defenders, lower defenders. This is a good job by Morris because he dives in, and what I always like to do when I'm running a circus, remember I, I was a receiver at one point, I always love to make it look like shallow cross, right? Make it look like you're running shallow cross and then take it vertical, right? And, and because you have a low defender right here and it turns into man-to-man, -man, now you're going to have to come flat. And he does a great job of getting vertical, showing him that vertical stem. You can see the, the DB hitting himself in the head. Dive inside, vertical stem, and then snap down and get outside. You got to beat the hands down. That's an outstanding job by a young receiver. And we know that they have a rapport from playing in high school together. That's a nice job by him because usually a corner route goes high, right? But when you have defender on top, you have to snap it off and make sure it comes a little more flat. He almost puts this guy on the ground, and, and it's a great job by a young guy. And obviously a really good throw. <laughs> Outside, perfect, on time. And you see he takes one hitch, two hitch, and then kind of a quick hitch. Well, when it's bump and run coverage, it's going to take a little longer, right? It's not free release, right? you got to see that Morris has to defend himself. He has to – fight with his defensive back, and so you can't throw it off one, two, three, no hitch, or one, two, three, one hitch. You got to wait a little bit because it's an individual cut and then drive the ball when you know it's open. Yes, sir. All right. All right, DG. So now it is time for play four. Let's go ahead and bring it up for the people. One, two, three, hitch ball. Perfect throw outside. Right, and that's an outstanding job by the defensive back, man. The defensive back is in position. He is he's he's got good coverage, but there's no defense for a perfect throw. Right? No defense for a perfect throw. Look at the ball outside. No defense for a perfect throw. You can't cover it better than that, right? You cannot cover it better than that, but you throw it on time, on target, it can't be stopped, right? And so that's why I think people that choose to play defense are goofy. Because you can be perfect and if he's perfect, then you can't stop it. Yeah, fourth down. In this game, uh, they are basically four for four. They they had a fade mm -hmm. ball to AJ Barner that wound up being a first down because it was a PI. Mm -hmm. But every fourth down play hit. Yeah, this was a perfect ball to a guy who was playing. Look, Bo Bray from from Maryland is he's so nice, man. He so I had him earlier this year. He didn't play in the game, and their defense is totally different without him, man. He is a talented player. You can see it's the game of inches. And in this case, the game of, game of centimeters. His hand is just barely not touching the ball, and it goes right into the hands of, of Coach and Loveland. That's not luck, right? That's preparation met with an opportunity, and, and J.J. makes a perfect throw on the outside in a crunch time type of situation. 
Yeah, he tried to say coast and pushed off. Nah, bro, you just got boxed out. You you went up against somebody who was more physical than you. Which well, he was crazy. grabbing. I mean, they're, they're grabbing each other, right? It doesn't matter. You know, he, he's grabbing him. Coaston, maybe he pushed him. Maybe he didn't. Well, the referee didn't call it. So you can just, you know, right. there's no review on pass interference for the right. offense, I guess, you know. Right. But that's. But Bo Braid is a very talented player. And and to be honest, if Bo Braid played for Ohio State, he'd be starting safety. I think so. I think he's very talented and, and not only talented as a pass uh, uh, a defender, but also in the run game, blitzing off the edge. I mean, he is a playmaker. They're going to miss him when he's gone. So we saw a perfect ball to Colston. The one sideline, you just saw a perfect ball. To and the, the, this one was a little closer, right? She's so closer to the right hash. It's a little easier to throw. But that other one was right hash all the way outside the numbers on the other sideline. So that's right. super impressive. Right. It's fourth down here against their best defender. And my mm -hmm. guy better than your guy. I, first, I'm going to throw a great ball. But you're right there. He's still better than you. Mm -hmm. I know I can count on him. Even when you're good, he's still better. So I, I set it up that like that because he went to Colston on another play. He went yeah. to Colston on another play right here. Or at least he tried to go to Colston on another play. And this had a huge impact on the entire oh, game. 100%, because you're about to bury him right here. I think you're going to bury him, and they, they don't – They've seen the writing on the wall, and will they quit? I don't think a Loxley team will quit, but you'll be able to lean on them and, and really get out of there uh, fairly seamlessly, in my opinion. But take a look here. It's, it's you know, Colson Loveland, a guy who is, is really good in this situation for sure, and it's a terrible throw, right? Why is it a terrible throw, right? I've been in a situation before, and every quarterback has. And if, if you're a former quarterback and you see this and you don't understand, then you probably didn't play at a high enough level. You didn't understand. You don't get it. Or, or you're just a hater or you're not good. I don't, whatever it was. Like, you, you drop back and you play quarterback. And this is what you don't see. This, this is why I love the, the camera angles that they have. Because this one, this is bird's eye view. Of course, you can see that linebacker. But look where he is. He's right behind offensive lineman, defensive lineman. So you can't truly see him. This is the view. You see that? Let's rewind it some. Let's rewind it some so we can see the view. Because he's about to throw the ball. And we're on, on, the camera's at his level, and he can't see him, and then he jumps up out of nowhere, right? And so he think, pause it. Can you see a defender? No. Right? J.J. is standing there, and all he knows is Coastal Oakland is going to be one-on-one -on -one with somebody down there, right? And I'm going to get this ball nice and high. Well, the defender is relatively close to the offense, offensive back, I mean, defensive uh, lineman, and the ball's getting thrown, and he jumps up, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Right, every quarterback has had that. Where it's like, I don't, I wouldn't throw it right to him, right? I just didn't see him, right? And so the thing is, for JJ, you got to see him. You got to know where he is, right? Especially since that linebacker, I think he's their second best defender. He's a really it's Bar Barham Barham. I think it is. He is special. He's gonna be a pro. He runs around. He he hits people, and obviously he can play uh, pass defense. But look at that. You still can't see him. The ball's on the way. You can't see him. And then he jumps up, and what a play! Right, what a play. And this is something that can't happen, right? If you're JJ, you make sure, okay, you fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, that's your fault, right? And so we haven't seen JJ get fooled twice on a lot of different things or anything, honestly, right? So luckily, it happened in this game, and we love it because turnover in the red zone could be devastating for, for Michigan against a good team like Ohio State. Right. So then there was another play, though. Like, look, don't take the gun away from the gunslinger. You don't, and, and you don't, if you're JJ, and you talked about this, don't get gun shy. You know, don't no, they get can't. gun shy throwing over the middle. And this was, this this was a great throw, DG. Mm -hmm. we, we pull it up, and I remember mentioning it to you. He's like, man, DG, you got to break this play down. And so yeah. you put it on the menu. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, kind of foreshadowed this of beating guys with throws, right? You got to be a guy with the throw. So you, you're going to motion coast and level down. He's going to get a little rip route. And so th this is what I want you to remember. J.J. doesn't even look this guy off, right? The middle linebackers who we're talking about. He doesn't look him off, but he can't go. Why can't he go, Devin? Why can't he go? Sam, like, well, you probably wonder, why doesn't he go? He can see him looking. Well, if he runs out of the way and the pass rush lanes aren't very good, J.J.'s going to run. So he's spying J.J. He can't move until J.J. moves. So because he's standing there and he's stuck like a statue in, in quicksand, Right, you can look at him and throw that ball, and if he jumps out there, you just run and go get the first down. Right, so this is a really good job, and it's a really nice throw because it's a lot of red jerseys around, and to have the conviction, the courage after throwing interception where you didn't see a guy, 
right? To have the conviction to still throw this ball in there and, and allow Colson to do his thing is uh, pretty impressive. And this is fourth down. But I mean, not surprised what we've seen all year, right? And this is the fourth down again, by the way. Yeah, he, he sticks this ball in there. <clears throat> All right, so you get all these vertical routes, and, and you know the 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 whip route is going to come from Ghost and Loveland that's in motion here. Uh, the throw is the most impressive thing, right? The concept is great and whatever, but the throw is super impressive because this play is kind of built for man-to-man coverage, right? You think you're going to get man-to-man on fourth and short. They stay in zone, and he fits it in there. I'm so sick of you and this board just tight. <laughs> what are we doing? All right, see that? Drive. Boom. In between three defenders. Fourth comes to make the play. It's a very nice job there. Very so, nice job. You know, this is what you- and not only not only that middle linebacker spying, how about the rusher that's trying to spy on the side as well, right? They're dedicating almost two guys. One uh, uh instead of t- instead of rushing uh, uh the fifth guy, actually instead of rushing the fifth or the fourth guy. They drop two people out outside and leave a middle spy, right? So everybody's got eyes on the quarterback, and they still can't stop it. And these are talented players, man. I'm just telling you. Yeah. Right, so watch watch, watch three guys. Right? You got a defensive lineman drop underneath. They're really trying to trick them. And I'm just telling you, that's hard to see. When you got one defensive end drop out, the other defensive end drop out, they rush three, and the middle linebacker is sitting there staring at you. Right, watch how it's kind of like a, a, a triangle of defenders and you got to try to fit that thing in there. And he does it. It's very good. I like what you said. You said standing there like a statue. That is a great description. He just froze. He froze because he knows his job is to stop the quarterback from running. And he even looked over there. He saw it. But look at him. He won't move. JJ's looking at it, and he refuses to move his feet. He refuses. And then the ball thrown right past him. And he gets up. He's all upset with himself. He's like, oh, my God. I can't believe that. Well, it's because of what J.J. has put on film all season, and he's a, a threat to run the football, and you can't just go running out of there if your job is to spy the quarterback. Yeah, man. Some great stuff, D.G. Well, listen, there are more plays that we could break down, but, you know, it's Ohio State week, so we got to close this out with your man, Samaj Morgan, right? Oh, man. So we got to get a Samaj play here because it seems like we're going to get a Samaj play every week. Oh, why do we keep getting Samaj plays? So, you know, just a regular old jet sweep, right? And so let's rewind it. Let's rewind it. Let's rewind it. Let's rewind it. That's beautiful. All that's good. Let's rewind it, right? Because how many times do you see a young guy who hasn't got a whole bunch of opportunities try to get outside because the play is supposed to go outside? Well, look at him. Go right underneath, right? Go right underneath. Beat the, uh, the linebacker who's a talent. I'm telling you. A talented player. All right, so he goes underneath and quickly starts to get back on that outside track where the player is supposed to go. Right, that's having vision and being able to run. And then the rest of this is all him. That's Bo Bray trying to stop him. He sticks that foot in the ground and reaches the ball over the pylon. Amazing, amazing play. And he's the guy that gets it done, man. I don't think the moment will be too big for him. I'm, I'm super excited for him. And, you know, I always joke about how, you know, we got to keep him down. We can't. We can't allow him to explode too much because he's crazy, which I still believe. But I just love the way he's – the moment hasn't been too big. I mean, watch him, right? He's not even worried about Bo Bray. That's a Big Ten type – all Big Ten type player. And he's not even worried about him. He's like, I'm getting in this end zone with his Jordan 12 cleats on. I mean, he's he's good, man. I You can't hide him now, right? Everybody knows now. So we might as well give him some love, but – you know, uh, uh, Barner, Colson Loveland, remember what I said. Choke, choke him up. Just just choke him up for no reason. He's going to be wondering why. You just say, eh, just in case, you know, just make sure you don't do nothing. <laughs> hey, man, the moral of the story of this whole thing, though, is, uh, is J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. Listen, I think this game, it's a team game. Defense has to play well. You, they got to run the football. Devin, it's about – the difference at the quarterback position being mm-hmm. so huge that if it if that manifests to the extent that we know it to be the case, Michigan wins this game going away. I know people get uncomfortable with saying stuff like that. But if J.J. plays like he's played the majority of the season and I expect him to do that, 
Michigan wins this game, then now it's just a matter of by how much. How well does Ohio State play? And Kyle McCord has not played well on the road. So if that's yeah. the case, Michigan wins going away. If he winds up playing well, then it's a cl- it's a closer win. But if JJ does his thing, I think it's a win no matter what. I think we uh I think fans should look at, you know, instead of like kind of getting up in arms and and on all these things, look at how vanilla they've been the last few weeks. Even against Penn State, just vanilla, right? And we know that they have weapons and plays that they can use and, and all these different things, but they've chosen to be vanilla. And I think that says a lot about how talented they are, where you can be vanilla and still beat everybody, right? And it's always to say for what's next. And what's next is the game, the greatest rivalry in the history of sports. Um, I love playing in it. I love watching it. I'm not going to be able to watch it live this week, but I'm, I'm going to have a side TV now. You know, I got Houston UCF, but I'm going to, hey, hey, everybody needs to send me updates now. Make sure <laughs> I know what's going on in the game. But I think I see it the same way you do where if he plays to that standard, it's it's tough. It's going to be tough to beat Michigan again um, for, for Ohio State. And the thing is, is as much as Kyle McCord, in my opinion, has really improved this season, and most of his improvement has been – just realizing that you have the best player maybe in college football on your team, right? And he plays wide receiver, right? And so being able to lean on Marvin Harrison, I think that uh, he's improved quite a bit throughout this season. But like I talk about for, you know, me and, and JJ and all the other guys that may be played in this rivalry, that this game is different. You feel different. You don't – all the pain and whatever, you know, all that's gone. He doesn't know about that just yet. He might have watched it. He might have think he might thinks he might think he knows about it, but you don't learn until you get in it. And it's it's a little chilly, but maybe the sun's out. It's a little nice. Maybe it's snowing. Maybe it's whatever. You don't understand, and it's hard to get fans to understand. I tried to illustrate it on Monday morning quarterback and, and even to start this show, but it's it's so hard to explain unless you get in that fire and and feel what it feels like, whether you're home or away this rivalry uh and he just hasn't yet right and so how long does it take McCord to feel good about the right and understand the magnitude and 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 play well and and is it too late or or does he ever understand or can he can he it doesn't become so overwhelming that he can't perform at the level that he, he wants to because of the magnitude of the moment because you can say oh he played Notre Dame no come on man that's not it he played Penn State. No, 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 no. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the game. And uh, will he be ready? Only time will tell, but we know for a fact. We know for a fact that number nine and, and the maze in blue is ready for that moment. He's proved it time and time again, even going back to 2021. Remember, I've highlighted it. He comes off the bench cold and throws a rope down the sideline in the snow. Moment not too big. He plays so-so or maybe even bad against Illinois. Everybody's all terrified. He even starts the game against Ohio State with not-so-perfect play, and then he buries him. He understands the moment, and I think that he's going to be ready to go. Couldn't have said it better, my friend. Uh, So I got to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I know it'll be uh, the happiest if Michigan comes out on top like we both expect them to, but it'll be. Yeah. It'll be good to be with family and friends no matter what. So appreciative of you and all the great work you do. Yeah, um, everybody that shared, you know, on Monday Morning Quarterback, I talked about, you know, doing a turkey giveaway. Everybody that shared and told people it was great. We gave away over 300 turkeys to families and kids coming out of school, two and three turkeys. You know, it was it was an amazing thing uh, on Monday. And uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody who, you know, supported and, and told people about it so that, People can get some uh, turkey to, for their family. So that's awesome. Okay. Thanksgiving. It's all about giving thanks. But Thanksgiving ends Saturday. And the game will begin. <laughs> all right, folks. That is going to do it for us on this edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study. I want to remind you, we don't own this footage. And because we don't own the footage, we do it strictly for you. Our love and appreciation for you. We use it strictly for the entertainment, education, and edification of you, the viewer. <laughs> but... That doesn't mean that we don't appreciate your support because we do. 
If you want to help fund the film study, all you got to do, we make it very easy. There's a link right there in the description that takes you to the fund the film study PayPal page because we got to get DG. Like I said, man, now he needs strawberries to go next to his hot tub. Strawberries and chocolate and some crystal too. You know, because he, we were talking I don't about drink alcohol. alcohol. Uh, yeah, but not for you, for all your, you know, ah! all your bathers. <laughs> all your bathers, DG. Because we know you have bathers. I'm about to close this laptop down. Stop playing with me, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> no, folks, come on. You got to help make it happen. Oh, DG, man. Just help fund the film study. Click that link. It's also in the description and the comments. By the way, listen, the Black Friday 24-7 sports sale is going on right now. 75% off an annual subscription. All of the inside intel and great, accurate coverage you can count on. It is available to you right now at the best price you will see all year. Do not miss it. Go to the michiganinsider.com. I'll put that link in the description as well. You'll be able to get there quick, fast, and in a hurry. That's going to do it for us, folks. We'll see you next time. We'll be talking about Ohio State next week. We'll see you then. Thanks a lot.